this month on the podcast, you're talking about neuroplasticity. You mentioned it a bunch already. Is there something you're looking forward to specifically, like something maybe you're fascinated by that jumps to mind about neuroplasticity, this fascinating property of the brain? Yeah, I think that it's clear there's one facet of neuroplasticity that is very well supported by the research data that hardly anyone is implemented in the real world. And that's the release of acetylcholine from these neurons in the forebrain called nucleus basalis. This is mainly the work of uh, Mike Mersenick, who used to be at UCSF, and some of his scientific offspring, Greg Reckenzone and Michael Kilgard and others. What they showed was increases in acetylcholine, this molecule associated with focus, in concert, meaning at the same time as some event, motor event or music event or any kind of sensory event, immediately reorganizes the neocortex so that there's a permanent map representation of that event. And I, I absolutely believe that this can be channeled toward accelerated skill learning. And my friend and colleague, Eddie Chang, who's now the uh, chair of neurosurgery at UCSF, but also a fine scientist in his own right, not just a clinician, he's doing studies looking at rapid acquisition of language using these principles. He trained with Mersenick. It's clear we have these gates on plasticity in the forebrain, and they are gated by nicotinic acetylcholine transmission. And why that hasn't made it into protocols for motor learning, sport learning, language learning, music learning, emotional learning, I don't know. I think part of the reason has been kind of cultural, is that scientists publish their paper and they move on. Merzenich talked a lot and still can be found from time to time talking about how these plasticity mechanisms can be leveraged. But uh, he had a commercial company and so then people kind of backed away from him a little bit. I think he was, to be honest, I think Merzenich was ahead of his time. And I think the timing is right now for people to understand these mechanisms of plasticity and start to implement them. Also, you know, it all sounds like becoming superhuman or optimizing or whatever, all that, yes. But also what about kids with language learning deficits or with dyslexia or just performance in school in general? I mean, I have a deep interest and concern for the future of science and mathematics and in not just in this country, but all over the world. And more plasticity equals faster, better, deeper learning. And if we don't do this, I don't think we're going to get the full reach out of all the machine learning tools either, right. because everyone talks about these huge data sets, and, but those huge data sets have funnel into human interpretation. I mean, we don't just like stare at the numbers and bask, right? So some, the human brain, I think, needs to leverage these plasticity mechanisms to keep up with the thing that's happening very, very fast, which is technology development. So that's a long-winded way of saying, um, basal forebrain, cholinergic transmission and plasticity, it allows for plasticity in adulthood and it allows for it in single trial learning, which is incredible. But how do we leverage that? Like in the physical space taking actions or is there some chemicals that can stimulate, uh, s stimulate neuroplasticity? Like what- I think it's the, the intersection of the two. Yeah. I think it's being engaged in a physical practice while enhancing pharmacology. It has to be done safely. And the, this is full of open questions. This is the very beginnings yeah. of it, like, yeah. like you're saying. Yeah, a, a pill that's safe, that increases nicotinic transmission. I mean, I know a number of people that chew Nicorette. Um, actually, there have an, I have a Nobel Prize winning colleague at Columbia, not to be named, um, who chews like six pieces of Nicorette in a half hour conversation yeah. with him. And he started doing that as a replacement for smoking because smoking is nicotine, nicotinic stimulation of the cholinergic system. So smokers have long known that it increases focus and attention and learning. It's just that the, the lung cancer thing is a, is a barrier. Yeah. Now I'm not suggesting people take Nicorette, but it's clear that we need better directed pharmacology. But you can imagine next time you go in for a learning bout, if it's really essential, you might want to stimulate the nicotinic system if that's safe for you. Again, I'm a doctor, so again, I'm not telling people to do this, but that's where it's going. Until we start merging machines with pharmacology and behavior, it's it. We're just kind of walking around in the circle over and over again, and it's going to happen. 